All right, welcome everyone back to the Be Healthy and Thrive podcast. My name is Brianna, and here I'm t- with today Florence, who is just an amazing woman, an amazing woman of God, and I just can't wait for you guys to uh, hear. So Florence, well, it's great to have you here. Thank you for being here. Hey, Brianna. It's so good to be here. It's been a while, but I'm really happy and excited to do this with you. Me too. Oh, so good. And so I just want to, you know, as you know, you've, we talked about earlier, but for those maybe just tuning in for this episode, really, this is a series about loving God completely with your whole health and life. And just been asking different women in different areas of health and life to kind of speak to it. And Florence has just a beautiful heart around really um, seeking God and seeking his presence around healing, around emotions and mental health as well. So Florence, will you just kind of tell us a little bit more about you, what you do? Um, I know you do multiple things, so you can tell us about all of that. (laughs) So go ahead. Okay. So hi, everyone. My name is Florence. Some people know me as a chammer. Um, I started blogging around 2010. The reason why I started blogging was because um, God actually led me to start blogging. I actually didn't want to. I didn't know anything about blogging, the online space, anything like that. But um, 2008, I I became really, really ill. At that point in time, I didn't know what was wrong with me, but I felt God really um, impressed upon me to share that journey and that was a leap of faith because I was sharing a before I knew what was wrong with me um so I hadn't a diagnosis didn't know how to get better or anything like that but you know I felt God really telling me to share this story so that was a leap of faith and I brought out my um my first ever blog and then as I was doing that um I felt God lead me to open up kind of like a healing ministry and I opened up my first ever self-hosted WordPress website for anybody who knows about WordPress you know that there's one that is hosted by WordPress and one that you host yourself and the transition from being um, hosted by WordPress to um, being self-hosted is is not always an easy transition because you're putting yourself out there in a new way and um, you have to purchase your own domain name and things like that and you just have a presence now um, so I did that not really expecting much but what I found was that people were gravitating towards the message that I was sharing which was that there is a healing journey and God is very much in that healing journey but that healing journey starts from the inside out And um, I was just really basically sharing my story and it gave a lot of hope to other people and it um, really gave them faith as well because generally what I found is that when people have a chronic illness, those are two things which really fall that kind of sense of hope that tomorrow could be different, that tomorrow could be um, better and faith, you know, um, will it happen for me? It's okay for other people, but maybe I'm unique. Maybe there's something different about me, which means that I won't get that. And so it was just a space for me to share my journey and to encourage people from that space. And I did that for a few years and something interesting happened for me because when I first started, I was, um, still wavering in my faith but um in faith sharing anyway and building myself up with everything that god was teaching me and i noticed that there was a transition um which is funny because the website was called on the road to healing there was this transition from me focusing on physical healing and being healed and being whole because then my life would start to this place of recognizing that actually healing was more than just physical healing. It was more than this goal that I had to reach and then my life could start. It was more about who I was, who I was being, um, how I saw life, um, the plans that I had for my life and things like that. And the Bible does say that God has plans for our good um, to give us a future and a hope. And so I started to shift from that mentality of, you know, one day maybe it could be this way to actually um, owning that it was this way now and I could enter into that space now. And when I made that shift, I realized that 
that space, that online space wasn't necessarily for me anymore, that God was kind of um, giving me a new direction where it was very much focused on potential and possibility and um, living a full and vibrant and rich life. And so I um, created another website, which is called Faith Health Potential, which is where you can find me now. And so um, I talk about all things faith, health and potential. And I get so much joy from doing that. And so that's what I do. Um, and I have a, a therapeutic coaching and mentoring business around that, where I support other women, not just in relation to their physical health, but all those things that stop us from living that full, vibrant, potential filled life that we we could live um really those things on the inside so you mentioned earlier on about um god and our emotions and our mind our thoughts so it's really bringing all of those things together um i have a background in psychology i trained um i did my degree in psychology i went on to teach psychology uh i I work in mental health at the moment and what I love is how there's so much psychology within the Bible. We often miss it, but it's very much present in the Bible. And I think the Bible is probably the best, not probably is the best personal development, personal growth book that there is psych psychology textbook that there is. Um, we just don't tend to approach it from that way, but it has so many nuggets for how to live um, that, rich vibrant full abundant life that god desires for us how to be truly healthy and whole from the inside out and so um i basically work with women to help them overcome those things internally that stop them from matter whether that's physical health um, which can be a tall order because you know um it's something physical health and illness is something very very personal to the person going through it they've probably heard a lot of things before around faith and healing they've probably been judged before um they probably actually feel quite a lot of shame and guilt in themselves because of where they're at and um, there's a lot of inner work to be done in that area before in a sense they can feel comfortable and confident enough to allow themselves the hope that there could be more, that they could have a normal quote unquote life again. Um, but it's not just physical, it's different areas as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's everything right there. <laughs> no, I think I love how, and I, and I guess I love how you said it. You said it so clear that we often like, I think, especially since, you know, being an entrepreneurship or just someone who wants to grow, you do go through a lot of personal development and growth, but seeing that the Bible is a really great and the best resource for that too. Mm. And, uh, and I just love how you frame that because I think you're right. Like I was in a season where I think I just read the Bible and I was like, forget all these other books. And I'm like, Oh, these books, but I'm like, what about the Bible? And sometimes it feels like, how do I hold them both in, you know, yeah, in the hand, but really seeing that there's something about God's word, obviously, because it's living mm. there and real, but that could really speak to mm. the mind, to the emotions and to the body as well. So um, how have you found that to be true in your life? Like what are some of the things that you kind of do with the Bible um, practices you have, or maybe mm. a verse? that you have that has helped you in your healing journey well um let me just reach behind me let me yeah. see what i've got behind living behind me <laughs> so um you won't be able to see it very clearly but i will kind of pull it out so um Whoa. this yeah <laughs> i don't know whether you can see it or not yeah i but, see a lot of little writing okay little writing okay so um a couple of years back this is just one example a couple of years back um god began to speak to me about abundance and um i just started to look at different scriptures relating to abundance and just turning them into affirmations mm -hmm. and just kind of meditating on those affirmations. What do, what do those affirmations really mean? What do those words really, really mean? And what it helped me to do was recognize that abundance isn't necessarily a thing. It's not about what we have. It's about 
and you probably hear me say this um, a lot, it's about who we are being, is about our internal states. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about where our belief is at. And belief isn't just about our thoughts, it's about you know, our heart as well. Um, because we can have a hard heart and that will stop us from believing. Um, so it's not necessarily about our mind or even our actions. If our heart is hardened towards the word of God, um, the soil of our heart isn't going to be soft and fertile. It's not going to accept those seeds that God wants to plant. And so um, I know people use affirmations. They use them daily and things like that. But really looking at the surface of our heart, um, it allows those affirmations to take root, you know, and how we feed them. You know, we can feed them through the word of God. The word of God is definitely one way of um, feeding them being in communication with God, you know, um, not just during the good times, but the the times when we're afraid and just being real and open with him, knowing that he's our father, um, that he loves us, that, you know, he knows all of our areas of weakness and he still accepts us. And also being open to to nature because he's created that, uh, nature as well so many lessons in nature that we can pick up on and there's wisdom in other people as well other people um god reveals knowledge to them whether they're christians or not he reveals knowledge to them it's for us to be discerning but what i find is that so much within the church we tend to kind of limit where we get our um information from and we miss out on the fact that other people can see the same thing from a different perspective and because we're not seeing it from that perspective we're missing out the complete picture in a sense and so does that make sense i'm not Mm. sure if i'm actually answering the question yeah you are you are you like said five things so okay (laughs) no yeah you just see different things about yeah definitely through other people um yeah and his word and meditating on it and nature and just kind of it reminds me of this book that I started reading earlier this week that um, my husband read a while ago, but it was called Sacred Pathways. I don't know if you're mm. familiar with it. No. And, um, I forgot, forget the author, but it just talks about how we all can act, all we, we can communicate with God in different ways, right? You have someone mm. in nature, you have someone in the word, and not to say we can't do the other ones, but there is a couple ways. And I think for me, it shifts based on the season too. Like, mm. In some seasons, being, you know, reading actually another book that it may not be quote unquote Christian, but I feel like God is speaking to me through that book. Mm, um, mm. But then sometimes I'm like, I just need the Psalms or I just mm. need worship music, right? And so being open to those different ways as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it goes back to softening the heart, mm-hmm. you know. If we are so rigid in where we feel that we get our information from, then we're not coming from that place of heart. We're coming from that place of mind. And therefore, how how can we tell that our heart is soft and open Mm -hmm. to receive from God? Because then we're kind of being arrogant saying, okay, God, you know, the only way that you can talk to me is through this avenue. And if you don't talk to me like this, then, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to pay attention to you. I'm not going to be receptive to what you could be saying to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. Getting your heart ready. Getting your soul yeah. Ready. So um, I know you kind of like, we were just, we were talking about this earlier, the title of this, and I just, oh, it's so delightful. Uh, just being like the healing present in the presence of God. And kind yeah. of what, what do you kind of mean by that? And what, um, what do you want to share about around that? Okay, the healing present. I actually came up, well, I didn't come up with it, but it, um, it touched me because I was listening to an audio scripture and it was Hebrews 4. Mm-hmm. And Hebrews 4, it talks about the Sabbath rest and, you know, entering into the rest of God, you know. And um, as I was listening to it, a word stood out to me from from the whole of that chapter and that word was today and it's weird because the scripture says you know basically today if you hear his his voice do not harden your heart Mm -hmm. and it got me it got me thinking because God had previously been speaking to me about this idea of the present being in the present and we hear this 
term a lot, especially within mindfulness, you know, being in the present and, and the power of now in, in the new thought movement. But this was something that God had already been speaking to me about because I came from a background of being a typical type A person, you know, so the typical control freak, the typical warrior, the typical perfectionist, the typical person who won't delegate to other people because I don't believe that they can do as good a job as me, you know, that kind of thing. And realizing that all of this contributed to me becoming sick as I was. And so God really began to speak to me about entering into his rest and realizing that that rest, although we kind of um, label it as the Sabbath and maybe the Sabbath day, actually understanding that that, that, that rest wasn't a day. Mm-hmm. It was a state of being. Mm-hmm. It was about coming out of the the stresses and worries and the strives of living in this physical realm that we do where everything is about, you know, how much time we've got physical constraints and things like that. And obviously because it's like that, we can shift from either being in the past oriented in the past oriented towards that way, thinking about what we've done wrong, regrets, guilt, shame, things like that. Or we go over to the future where we're worrying about what might be, worrying about um, all these kind of a million and one things that we tend to, to think might happen. And so we kind of shift from those places. And, and what God was simply saying to me was actually the presence. The present is where, is where the healing is. Mm-hmm. It, because that's where I am. And, and the, when the scripture says, today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart Mm -hmm. that reference to today is a reference to um is a reference to now it's always today it's Mm -hmm. always today and we enter into today when we're still when we're still enough to hear his voice Mm -hmm. because when we're not still enough to hear his voice that's when we harden our hearts Mm -hmm. Because we go, okay, God, I hear what you're saying, but I don't really hear what you're saying. I don't believe what you're saying. And the scripture says that we, that the reason why we do not enter into the rest is because of disbelief or unbelief, that those people who didn't believe didn't enter into his rest. Mm -hmm. And so there is this thing of learning to be still and being, and being present that brings us, that doesn't even bring us into his presence, but um, somehow we enter into his presence because he is always there. He's always in the stillness. He's always in the now, but we're often not in the now. We're either in the past or in the future. So we skip over it and we skip over all the blessings that are in, in today mm-hmm. because we're so focused on those other areas. And so I guess that's really um, what I wanted to share. You know, there is, there's, it's, it's, something that we can miss over if we do not take time to be still and enter into his rest. And um, I always go back to John 10, 10, which is basically the scripture that um, my, what I do is founded around and everybody knows John 10, 10, you know, um, that the enemy came to steal, kill and destroy, but I came that you might have life and have it in abundance. And, you know, we can get so used to quoting that and, you know, this is our birthright and this is what the enemy wants to do. And yes, that's true. But like anything that God gives us, it's a choice that we have, whether we want to experience that and enter into that or not. And what we find is that it often goes against what we default to. It often goes against our own norm. And that's where the struggle is. And you know, I think it's in Hebrews as well. It talks about striving to enter into his rest because it's an understanding that actually it doesn't come easily to us. It's hard to not go back into the past. It's hard to not worry about the future. It's hard to, to let go and, you know, let God, as people say, you know, and, um, yeah, so I guess that's what I really wanted to share. Mm, That's so good. 
I just love it. And, you know, other people would call it different things like being mindful and all those things, but you're yeah. so right. Just the idea that, um, we're, we're constantly maybe looking for God in the past or in the future, but not seeing that he's right here and he's mm. right in this moment and he's full of grace and joy and love and peace and provision mm. and all these different things right now. Yeah. So I, I think that's just such a gift. So how would you recommend maybe one big, not one big tip, it could be a small tip, um, but one thing someone, those listening can do to really help to be more present um, and seek God now? Well, I'm not going to lie and say that it's easy. It's definitely not easy. I mean, anybody who's ever tried mindfulness will know that it's, uh, you know, it's a difficult thing. And they do say, you know, that it's something that you need to practice so that it becomes a habit. Um, I was speaking to somebody quite recently who um, has had a very, very stressful background and their default is, you know, we were talking about thinking styles and things like that. And, you know, they've got very black and white thinking. It's either this way or that way. And they've got very kind of um, catastrophic thinking. So everything is always the worst thing that it could possibly be. And so whenever they act, it's really a reaction towards what's going on inside of them. And, you know, whether it's an email at work or something, you know, it's every all of their actions are reactions to the thoughts that they're having. And so one of the things I said to them was, you know, slow down, just slow down. There is no rush. And I guess one of the things behind presentness is understanding that time is an illusion. And that's something that obviously because we're in this world where we age and everything like that, it's hard for us to really grasp the fact that time is an illusion. You know, yes, our body is aging and decaying, but inside of us, you can ask somebody who's like 80 years old, they still feel the exact same way that they did when they were in their twenties, because even though their body has changed themselves as a person, they're not the, they're not the same. And I guess that's why, in a sense, we need to be active in our personal growth and personal development. Otherwise, we remain in exactly the same kind of stunted state, reacting and acting towards everything in the same way. So being still is really important because what we do is we slow down our default habits. We can look from the outside and actually recognize our responses more. Um, and yes, as I mentioned, this will take time, this will take effort, but it's actually a really very empowering thing to do because you can notice that this is me when I'm thinking, but actually I can stand outside of me when I'm thinking and also be an observer of that person. And by being an observer, I can direct the way that I think. So we actually have control over our thought processes more than we give ourselves credit for mm -hmm. just by allowing ourselves to slow down and be stiller. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. It's so funny because I was actually talking with my husband this week and I've been up and down and feeling like physically good and not good and and I, it just, whenever that happens, I mm. want to make these major decisions or I feel like, cause I'm physically down, like my emotions and my mind and it's, and I'm like, okay, this is going to happen or I'm going to just not do this. And then for mm. the first time I came back and I was like, Brianna, what's actually going on? Mm. Okay. What's going on is you're not feeling well. So that's exemplifying mm. all of these other things. And typically I would like, yeah, I don't know. I would just go woe to me and like really allow those feelings to sit, but really choosing saying, what do you most need right now is like go rest and then come back to this thought and yeah. decision. Like it's not the time to make the decision, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you presently need? You don't need to make this decision now. It's like yeah. a couple months away, <laughs> you know, just focus on what you need right now. Yeah. Happening now, but you're right. Yeah. So, and I was, you know, wrestling with a decision I made in the past and what I need to make in the future. And it's just, yeah what about now? You know, and I love that yeah. you're just calling people back to experience now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it can be as slow as we want it to be. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if you go for a walk in the park, then that can, you, you can be walking for like 30 minutes and it feels like, you know, you've absorbed so much if you're really paying attention. And when you come out of that space, it's, you feel really refreshed. Whereas half an hour in front of a, a laptop, 
typing away, you know, it's a totally different feeling, but the same amount of time, the richness and the quality in each of those activities is different. Mm. One is kind of very kind of an unconscious effort driven work thing. And the other is kind of being very present and in the space and in the zone and receiving very receptive and open and so we we allow ourselves to be fed and i guess that's what the the healing presence and the presence of god is it's allowing ourselves to step into this time where we can be fed mm-hmm. um because i guess it goes back again to john 10 where um jesus says you know that he's a good shepherd and um anybody who does um research on on sheep and things like that will know that um sheep aren't probably the most intelligent of animals they get themselves into scrapes and things like that and they're really dependent on their shepherd you know and we it's about recognizing that actually we're dependent as well on our shepherd for our safe keeping you know our provision all of those things and we get that when we allow ourselves more time in the present because that's where he resides. He doesn't, you know, the Bible says that um, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever and that God never changes and, and that he is the beginning and the end. So ultimately he is all that there is and whether it's yesterday, today or tomorrow, he is always there and he's always the same. So when we stop and are still, then we enter into where he is. And, you know, it's not about what time it is or which juncture in our life it is. It's just about entering into his presence where um, all provision flows out from. Mm -hmm. So good. Yes, I love that. I love your writing. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have said so much. And I think you're like, you even speaking to me right now. I just feel like that's actually the season I'm even in where God's just saying, lean in, like don't expect yeah. out, but actually that it will just lean in where you are and go deeper. But that means being more present where I am at yeah, more available. And um, also just, yeah, leaning back at the same time from all these other things to have that rest mm. in all senses of the word. So I am ready for that healing present this Christmas. Amen. <laughs> um, so maybe you can just share with us as we kind of wrap up a little bit about your, your giveaway. It's so, so good. It's so perfect for this, your, this whole conversation um, that someone can, can win here. Okay. So the giveaway, it's my ebook, one of mm-hmm. my ebooks. It's called Heal Your Heart, Heal Your Life. Um, I wrote this to i guess to marry this whole idea that healing is much more than a physical thing Mm -hmm. it's something that happens inside of you it happens in the ground of your heart um and because of that inner healing that happens it expresses itself on the outside and not just physically in your body but in your life as well you become a new being you become a new creature and the bible talks about this but this is something that we enter into through the process of sanctification you know Mm -hmm. some of us we are more receptive to that process as painful as it as it is because we know that it bears good fruit and that good fruit isn't necessarily about you know um the physical tangible things that we might receive in the process it's more about who we become and what we're able to do in this world as a consequence of who we become. And so um, when I gave this, this book out to some other people to, to read for me, they came back and they were like, you know, this is so good for people who've experienced trauma and um, whether it's childhood trauma or abuse or whatever, or even for parents to understand, um, maybe some signs of what their children might be going through and how certain things, how certain seeds may be planted in their hearts that might affect them as an adult. So for me, it's a really empowering book to help us understand 
that our heart is a sacred space. Um, and even if things have happened to us in the past, which have hardened us, which have distorted us and taken us away from who we really are, who God has created us to be, we can, we can go back and heal those things so that our, our tomorrow is healthier, is fuller, is more, more vibrant. And we can live those lives that, you know, we desire deep down inside, but, you know, maybe things in our past or fears have limited us from doing so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that sounds amazing. <laughs> oh man, heal your heart, heal your life. It just, yeah, it just goes so well. And I'm so glad you shared people's experience with the book as well. So people yeah, hear firsthand, like this is something to really look into. So excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Those listening, make sure you sign up if you want to win, um, win that book. And so maybe Florence, as we wrap up, is there anything else you want to share with us? And also where can people find you on the web, on social media to just kind of learn more about you and what you do? Anything else that I want to share? I guess it's back in relation to being still and, um, and presentness. And I think you touched upon it as well. Um, you touched upon emotions and sometimes having those difficult emotions. Um, I think giving ourselves space to have those emotions, mm -hmm. trying to not, not judge too harshly those emotions. Um, sometimes sitting in silence, around those emotions. I know um, we do journal, especially as women, you know, we like to journal. That's also a great way to sit with our emotions and um, feel comfortable with them. But the whole idea is to slow down, really. So anything that allows us to slow down so that we can bring what we're hiding from ourselves to the surface, because that's mm -hmm. why we spend a lot of our time in the past or the future, because we just don't want to deal with what's in the now, do we? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Stop it. That's so good. It's so true. We do tend to want to hide these things like from ourselves yeah. though we know what's there and we just need to allow it to come to the surface. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's true courage. That is true courage. Yeah. But you know, that if we want to, if we want to really have the life that we desire, then we need to be courageous enough to face ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, so, in relation to where to find me, my website www.faithhealthpotential.com, and I am on Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash soul nursing, all one word, and Instagram, instagram.com forward slash achama UK, all one word. That's A C H A M A U K. It doesn't stand for United Kingdom. That's just the first two letters of my surname. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I was so blessed by everything you said, and I really felt like the Lord definitely spoke to me as well. Oh, praise uh, God. And so thank you so much, and um, I look forward to learning more from you in this topic, in this area. Yay. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Um, be sure to check the links that go along with this uh, podcast just on where you can find Florence as well as on the giveaway. So thanks so much, and we'll talk to you soon.